as you can see this thing really needs to get replaced all right so our new calipers have arrived here they are look at that okay now you can tighten it there we go i like that yeah so it seems like my fear has come to pass these are different brakes than the ones in the back and we're back to this again it seems that it always turns into apocalypse every time it comes if it doesn't fit these bolts i'm in trouble so i don't know holy all right so the next step in our jeep cherokee xj restoration is to change the brakes the brakes that come with it are rather small and we want to upgrade the size however we can't actually put bigger calipers or rotors because of the size of the rims but there is something else you can do what you can do is actually change the master cylinder and the brake booster to a 95 to 96 XJ and there's also a bunch of Grand Cherokee um, brake boosters you can do however we have ordered that stuff so that's coming in but in the meantime we're going to remove the wheels and we're going to take a look at the brakes the rotors the pads and all that stuff and we're going to put some new ones in get ready to look at these nasty things so as you can see these brakes are nasty and those calipers and those rotors are really small but however we cannot upgrade the size so we have to upgrade the booster but we will change the new ones Okay, so we've taken the caliper and the rotors off and we just put the wheel back on. So if you don't have blocks like we don't here, you can always just put the wheel right back on. So that's the easiest way to do it. It's also the safest way. You don't want to keep your car up on a jack. So now we're going to take the other one off, make sure they're the same because we're actually not sure if the, uh, the brakes are different or not. And um, there were some words that it might be a Grand Cherokee, but it looks just standard for me. Take it off and then we'll order some new ones. Ah oh, man. Yeah, so it seems like my fear has come to pass. These are different brakes than the ones in the back, so I was kind of afraid of that. I had heard a rumor that these had been changed, and as you can see, somebody has definitely changed them. I think these are even custom drilled, so I have a feeling um, it's going to be kind of a challenge to get. These uh, these coppers are different too. Look, they look completely different. Not, <clears throat> not the same at all. So what we got to do is I think one of them is the originals. I assume these are the originals. They look like the originals. These are definitely custom made. So I'm going to have to go around town to some brake places and try to identify what they are and try to order some. I got three weeks um, getting married for those of you who don't know. So the wedding is three weeks away. I really want to bring this truck over there, but this is definitely going to be a challenge. Um, the brake booster kit, um, I actually ordered a brake booster and new master cylinder from a 95 96 Cherokee so that's coming from the states so we can't work on that for the next couple days <clears throat> we'll only have two weeks after that and then these guys like I said we're gonna have to go around town so really hoping uh, we can make it this is really cutting it close still have to get the car safety still have some things to do but um, we're just gonna keep going in this video you're gonna see all the steps but this is gonna take several weeks to actually film so what I'm gonna do is just take this apart take it to town put the wheels back on and try to figure something out. We'll go from there. Look at these nasty things. These are the other rear brakes. Just nasty. Okay, here are the original rotors from the front. We managed to get them off. Just have to remove those two screws right over here and they should pop right off. Alright, so the next step in this, before we do any more actual brake stuff, what we're going to do is we're going to replace the master cylinder and the brake booster. A lot of uh, complaints I've heard in these old Jeeps is that the system isn't very good so a lot of people are complaining that it's just not sufficient so what they do is they actually upgrade it so what you can do is you take the master cylinder out and what we're gonna do is just disconnect these brake lines take the brake booster out and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the um, brake booster and master cylinder from a 95 to 96 Cherokee and you go from a single chamber to a dual chamber so this is actually gonna be bigger it's gonna be out here so you gotta loosen this guy take these off there's two screws here you have to uh, take out and then underneath the dashboard there's four screws and one switch so take that out and go from there so loosen this guy and then this guy one of them is half inch one of them is seven sixteenths got 
on it. Okay, so you're going to want to remove these four screws, there's four of them, underneath the dashboard. Ah man, I didn't make it again. I uh, had to stop last time because I was too tired and came out here this morning, had one more screw to go underneath the brake booster and then uh, this started again. So I just got back from the store, got some parts and unfortunately the, uh, the weather has changed for the worst again. So I'm going to have to stop again. This is going to be a lot of stop and goes, but that's kind of the way it is. It seems that it always turns into apocalypse every time I come. So here it comes again. Man. So today looks like a bit of a write-off, but that's okay because I was able to get some stuff done. We were able to go to the store and I was able to source new rotors, new calipers, and new pads for the front of the Jeep. So the original ones, still able to get them, which is really nice. So if we open, open up this box and not kill ourselves with this, yeah, have fun dropping that on your foot, that'd be a lot of fun. Check these guys out. Brand new rotors for the Jeep. They were 35 bucks each. I got two of them, so these are the fronts. And thankfully, these are still, you can still find these. Um, I think the pads were not much more. You can buy pads for 24 bucks, or you can get ones for like $48, the much better ones. So I got the, the better ones. Might as well go for, for the top of the line stuff. The calipers are not in yet, so we'll get those tomorrow. So you'll see that momentarily in the video because we're not doing much more today. Um, unfortunately, I went with these rotors to to a bunch of GM suppliers trying to figure out what they are and nobody can give me an answer basically. Everyone says they don't know how to figure it out, this and that. So I have these rotors, I have no idea what they're from, but doing some research I found um, when you have the drum to disc conversion kits, it will come with the disc, the, you know, the calipers and all that kind of stuff, emergency brakes, some of them do, some of them don't. But I noticed that these ones will have a 5x5 five five offset bolt pattern and then they'll have some extra ones too. I think it's 5x475 um, four or 4.5 four which is kind of cool and so you'll have these basically and the problem is you can't just go to the store and say oh these are my my rotors. You can't actually get them so I think I'm going to have to go to a specialty place buy these. These are the 11 inch rotors and they have the weird thing about these ones is if you look at the, the original rotors check this out now I know it's kind of hard to see on camera, but look, this is really, really, really deep. This is the originals. I think it's like an inch and a half, almost two inches. This one is only an inch. So this is my problem. Can't get these because I can't source them. I can't just go in and tell people what I need. So I think, as I said, I'm probably going to have to go to a specialty store, try to find these so I don't have these rotors. Unfortunately, I feel like I'm kind of screwed in this situation. Now for the actual calipers, these are the original front calipers and I was able to source pretty much the same ones, which is nice. So the front's not a problem. Now here's the from, problem with the back. The back, once again, no idea what it's from. They can't just tell you what they are. Now the back is a different size and it comes with this plate over here. So this plate, if you look at it, bolts into um, the actual axle. There's another plate on the other side, so it has to be the same. So what I did is I went online and I found calipers um, that this dude on um, this site called carsuck.com he had this genius idea of using these Cadillac uh, 1980 brakes from a, I don't remember what it was, like a DeVille or something and it has a handbrake on it and apparently he got these suckers on here so that's what I ordered, they come tomorrow I pray to God that these things will have the same um, bolt pattern because I need these two bolts to, to work now there's Sorry, these guys right here, these two bolts. Now there's some extra ones. You see there's a couple. This one has four extra ones, whereas his only have the two, so most of them only have two. So we'll see how that goes. We'll pick those up tomorrow and pray to God that they fit. I think if everything goes well, we should be able to put the front brakes on, um, and then we'll try out the rear brakes and see what happens. But we're going to have to wait for tomorrow, because right now, look what's going on outside. We're back to this again. All right, so it's another day. Unfortunately, I got some bad news. The Cadillac calipers did not come in. They are delayed another day, so that kind of sucks because I spent the last two nights uh, not sleeping because I'm worried about uh, getting this thing done for the wedding, so I'm only 
two weeks away now for my wedding and I still don't know if these calipers will even fit the car so <laughs> it's gonna be another crappy night unfortunately but the uh, front calipers pads did come in and I showed you the rotors earlier so we're gonna finish up the front uh, we're not gonna completely finish it because I still need the center caps and the lugs those haven't come in either but we'll uh, get those installed we'll get the pads and rotors installed all right so we removed the wheel but as you can see this rear plate here is quite nasty we actually want to we want to salvage this this shield here as well we want to keep all this stuff we're not removing anything so what we're gonna do is before we put it all back on put the new assembly on rather we're actually going to clean this up a bit so just a little wire brush a little bit of spray paint you know make it look nice and keep it going for a couple more years So our new calipers have arrived. Here they are, look at that. Much better than the old ones. Brake pads, brand new. So we will get started with this right away. Okay, so there it is all painted and ready to go. We can now start putting the rotors on. Hmm. I have actually never done brakes before. It's one of the things I have never done before. So this is a first. So I will be learning along with you going through this process. Okay, so the calipers are on, but we didn't put these on because I have no idea how the hell these go on and they don't seem necessary. Please comment if you think otherwise. All right, calipers on, rotors on, pads are on. Now we're gonna reconnect the actual brake line. Okay. There we go, look at this. I noticed this assembly is a little different than uh, some assemblies I've seen on YouTube for other people because I noticed the rotors on the back have nothing here or sorry not the rotors the pads whereas a lot of YouTube videos I've seen people have like these clips on the back and a lot of people don't have the, the little clips that go on the caliper like these guys so I'm not sure why that's different but I'm just gonna run with it like I said if you see a problem and you you know this stuff, just write it in the comments. We can always fix it in the future. The assembly. There's two screws in the back you just want to line up. These guys. Back them off. And then put them on. At least that's what I think. All right, so we'll put that back on now. Now here's something I don't get. This is an American car, means it uses imperial measurements. Why this stuff is metric here, I don't know. This is a, a size seven, which is metric. Allen goes right behind. Just tighten her. Someone could explain that to me. That'd be awesome. Now I'm not tightening the other side up, I mean all the way, because I want to put the other side on first. Make sure it lines up and then I'll... Oh. 
Okay, now you can tighten it. Daddy back on. I've taken these things off like 30 times, I swear. <laughs> Missing a lug nut. Alright, that's it. Going down. You know, I might as well take that last bolt out. Get the brake booster out, this is gonna be fun. Yeah, I was just about to do that last screw and then massive thunder went on during the time lapse. You didn't see the flash, but it was like ridiculous a lot. So I'm gonna try to hurry up and get this thing done. And here is the old brake booster. As you can see, this thing really needs to get replaced. This is the original one. It's pretty rust rusty, so it's good that we pulled it out. Put a bigger one in, and that's it. That's all we could do for today. Perfect. Another nasty storm coming in. Oh, these winds always make me nervous. So they're finally here. It's uh, the next week, actually, believe it or not. It's been several days. It's been a full week since uh, these were supposed to come in, but they have finally arrived. So I am extremely nervous because I haven't slept in four or five nights now. I'm, I'll be honest with you, I am just wiped because if these do not fit my current configuration, I don't know what I'm going to do. And I'm not sure I can get this thing ready for the wedding. So anyways, my issue is this bracket that comes with the old kit. If it doesn't fit these bolts, I'm in trouble. So I don't know. I haven't opened them yet, so I want to do it on camera. So either I'm gonna be really <laughs> this one or really happy. I don't know. We'll see. Okay, we're gonna do a little closer angle just so we can actually see. So you're not gonna see my face. It's probably a good thing. Who the hell wants to see that? Okay. I'm just gonna remove it out of the plastic first because you know I had to stop the camera because there's so much freaking packaging. It took me like literally 10 minutes to open this thing. Before I try this out, let me reiterate how I got to this stage. I literally saw a video. I looked up a uh, Dana 35 rear differential disc uh, disc conversion, and there was a video of some dude online, as I mentioned earlier, carsuck.com, and he did this idea. But I have no idea if he has the same rotors or he's the same size. I don't know anything. That's the closest I can get to. So this is like a massive gamble, really this far in. So, all right, let's take a look at these things. Okay, let's turn it around. Okay. Has the this is the handbrake mechanism I believe. Looks like it. Looks a little different than what I saw. Originally here I saw a big spring, but I guess that's I guess that's it. I don't know. Okay, it looks similar size. But how we'll really know though is based on this piece of metal here. I'm just gonna look which way it goes. Supposed to go in like that. All right, wish me luck. Okay, here goes everything, like literally everything. Holy, shit, it fits, dude from CarSuck.com. I love you, dude. I f***ing love you. Holy, shit, it works. That means this is gonna work. Well, at least the the beginning. Yes. Oh man, looks like I got a little bit too excited. Turns out these stupid calipers are missing the spring, as I mentioned. This is actually crucial, and it's missing, so I went back to the, the supplier head, and they can't get the spring or the arm. That's just the way it is, and turns out the arm is discontinued, as well as the spring. So what I actually have to do is I had to order two more sets of calipers from God knows where. It's going to take a couple days to get here, so can't actually install the rear brakes. So quite the disaster, 
can sell the brakes till that's done and I can't even do uh, can't change the rotors either because I can't source the rotors and then at the same time when I put this all together it turns out the new pads don't fit either because there's so little space that I have to salvage the old pads so ridiculous ridiculous thing here you know honestly I found out the easiest way to do this I found a, a full set you can get on uh, it's Leeds brakes I believe it's called something like that they have the full set it's literally the exact same caliper everything is is this whole set that we're doing except they buy it as a kit and then you have everything so I would have bought that had known about that earlier but it's too late now anyways in the meantime I didn't want to just put these calipers on the way they were before I actually ended up painting them nice red so we're gonna put them on once you put the pads on of course and then the pads are just painted black just so they look a little bit better than they did before you know, I always like to extend the life of everything I'm working with. And letting a little paint goes a long way, because that's just a primer on there, and it will come off and it will rust, so you might as well have it last as long as humanly possible. So I think it's going to look really nice if I put it on correctly. <laughs> there we go. With the red caliper. I should also mention my lug nuts and center caps didn't come on Friday as they were supposed to and as well my brake booster and master cylinder didn't come either so I'm kind of stuck right now running out of time here really really unfortunate Sunday now we're gonna have to do this in the evenings and I really didn't want to do that but we'll see how it goes hopefully this stuff comes soon and late there we go I like that The old rotors back in since we can't source new ones and then as you can see here we have the three calipers you got the old ones of course without the handbrake mechanism and then I bought this one that has the handbrake mechanism but doesn't come with the armor spring so if you're buying these kind of brakes watch out make sure they come in the picture the Ray Bestus ones do not provide the arm this is the Cardone the Cardone does come with the arm. You see, that's really essential, so I cannot do any handbrake work without that. So I'm actually going to, believe it or not, keep all these calipers. I'm not going to bring them back, and I'll tell you why. I am going to get rid of this old one because this one doesn't have a handbrake, so it doesn't matter. I'm going to keep this because just finding these is becoming really difficult now, and it's 2019. If in 10, 15 years or something happens and I need to change it, you know, having two of these around, I feel like it's just a good idea. So what the hell? So. We'll put this on now. I just finished painting it. It didn't come red like this. I just like to preserve it and at the same time make it look a little better. So we're going to put these bad boys on right now. All right, so unlike the front brakes, which are a breeze, these are a little more complicated. You have to put everything in a certain order or it's just not going to work. And it actually feels quite impossible if you put it out of order. 
First thing you need to know is, do you have one of these brackets on your, on your um, car? These brackets in the back here, it's welded, it's got four screws. This is the conversion kit. So if you have a conversion kit, uh, you have to put it on. It's a little difficult to do. I don't know how to do it. I'm not showing you how to do it. I'm just showing you how to replace all this stuff. All right, so now let's put it on. So the series of events here is quite specific. You have to do the sequence or it's not going to work. First thing you want to do is put your caliper uh, with your bracket and just put one bolt on for now. Not on the bottom, just on the top. Put her on. There's four screws on the back, at least in this kit. Bolts, I mean. Some other kits might have a different configuration. Okay. So you see, you just want this loose for now. So don't worry about that. Just the one screw. Now the rotor. And you'll notice it won't go on, so we have to put that on like that. Now the next part is actually a little hack I like to do is. your rotor on where you like it and put a lug nut on because then it's not moving around much easier to work with you can always loosen it if you need to you need some play there what I found this helps just one less thing to worry about next thing you want to do line it up along the contour the pad of the uh, rotor sorry snap it in now is kind of the tricky part getting it all to work. See now, I'm having difficulty, but because that rotor is locked in, it's not too bad. Okay, so that's in. Now I still got one screw in the back, but even before you do that, take your pad, you're gonna drop it in. All right, so let me explain what's happened here. I just put the other bolt on the bottom. The top one here can now come through. Now this is really important that the bottom one's holding it because here, in order to put the pad on, you can't put the pad on ahead of time, just snap it all together. You have to put this on first, then the pad, then the bolt. And now, it's a matter of just lining it all up, you know? Now the rest, you just wiggle around until you get it to go in. I'm having my spacer inside this coming out constantly, so it's becoming a little bit of a challenge. But that's okay. Really, really close here. Start screwing it in. Fortunately, I beat up my pads, my uh, calipers a little bit, but I could always touch them up a little bit later. All right, so I'm in a very tight space here, and as you can see, or barely see, I have to do the four screws back here, or the bolts rather. Now, to do that, I actually have a little trick. I got this little wrench here. This is a Crescent Tool wrench. It was sent to our other YouTube channel, Home Run Vision DIY, and it's a ratchet wrench. Very good for low profile, so this is really, really cool. Nice and set up to us. I'll show you how it works. Put on washer, your nut. And rather than doing it with a little wrench, just do this. That is awesome. So special thanks to Crescent Tools. This is awesome. Really, really nice tool. Love it. Comes with a whole bunch of different size sockets, so you just put them on the back. And it also has an adjustable wrench in the front. Wicked.
so the wheel's on. The new hardware is on, the new center cap is on. As you saw earlier in the time lapse, I had to actually switch the back plate to go back here instead of having the caliper in the front, because if the caliper's in the front, the parking brake mechanism was pointing down instead of towards the front of the truck. So what we did was put it back here. Now you can actually pull it instead of having to push it. So that could be wired. Order the brake uh, lines. Hopefully those will come in sooner than later. But now we got some exciting all four on. And I was um, really anticipating that tomorrow I would put the um, master cylinder and the pump on, which are supposed to arrive. So I want to put those on. However, <laughs> I, ch I go to put in the final brake line and then I check these two nuts and I'm like, they're a completely different size. And I'm wondering like, why is this one different? This brake line is slightly different. I'm not sure why. So I got to change the ending so that I can use it on the new caliper for whatever reason. I guess one of the calipers must have been different on the other one and it was a different size. So the screw didn't go in. So <laughs> always some sort of challenge, right? It's never as easy as it should be, but um, this does not fit the current brake line. So what can you do? We'll have to go to a machine shop or something and try to figure that out. But I was so close to getting it done. Regardless, we're going to keep going today, or uh, sorry, rather tomorrow. Today we're done. Tomorrow we'll do the master cylinder and the pump, and let's get this thing on the road already. Okay, brake lines are all good. That means all the calipers are finished. It's now ready to be connected with the e-brake. That's one thing I'm not going to show you how to do. i got to figure out how to do that myself. It's not going to be in this video. However, it does have the mechanism, so it just has to be connected up at the front there. So it's a new day, and as you can see, the mess is back. Yep, but you know what? That's actually a good thing because a lot of this stuff is going out today. Some of it just came in, and I wanted to update people. Basically, yesterday I installed this last caliper on the left side, and that one was a Cardone. The other side was a Ray Bestis. Turns out they're slightly different, so you gotta watch out. The brake lines did not fit on the Cardone, which really sucks. So I literally had to take it off again this morning, and I took the spring and the arm off, and I put on the original Ray Bestis ones I bought, and it works. So that's great. So they're both on now, but if you're buying this stuff, make sure they're the same brand and check your brake lines because it might not work. So uh, the Cardone had a larger bolt and the Ray Best had a small one. Anyways, moving on. So all this junk here, first thing is we got the old calipers. So these are going to go, let's get our core back. If you, you know, return this stuff, you get a core uh, fee return. So that's a good thing to do. Got my receipts there. So that's going out. This over here is pretty hilarious. Obviously it's the brake uh, booster as you can see based on the fact some of it's sticking out. I'm not really thrilled about that kind of packaging to be honest with you. But hey, uh, not surprised at the same time. So they could have used a bigger box, right? So let's see if this is the right thing, right? We got our old one right over here. That's the old one. Okay. I'm just going to put it aside for now because I kind of want to compare. The new one should be the same except longer. And, and heavier. Much heavier actually. That looks right. Let's compare because they are different a little bit. We're going to have to mod these a bit. So from the other videos I saw online, like that bleeping Jeep guy, love his videos once again, he mentioned that you got to drill, see this one's much, much bigger, and this one's smaller and flatter. I don't know, it looks a little different, we'll have to see. I'm not really sure if I can drill it that big to be honest with you, but we'll see. Uh, <laughs> I think it's just a matter of making this flat, he said. And at the same time, you have to make this slightly bigger. There's not much to drill out there, so we'll have to see. But other than that, it looks pretty dead on. So bolt on. Okay, that's cool. Get this piece of junk out of here. All right, so now we just need the master cylinder. Okay, these parts are from fourwheelparts.ca or .com if you're in the States. I'm in Canada, obviously. And uh, it's a pretty good supplier, to be honest with you. They have a lot of great stuff. And I'm not sponsored or anything, I'm just saying that because it's hard to find good parts. Um, I like that site, Quadratech's pretty good, and uh, Speedway Motors is where the other Cardone uh, caliper came from. Those three sites are really great. There it is. Nice. Ok, 
Okay. Do do do. Perfect. Looks good to me. Let's just double check it on here. I'm not sure which side is up. I think it's this one. Perfect. Okay. <laughs> so I guess we're ready to install. That's awesome. But before we do that, we're going to mod this guy over here. So we'll do that in a second. And uh, so we'll get started. But before I do, I just want to show you one thing. So before we move on, I actually wanted to thank someone named Luke. Luke uh, contacted me, I uh, had an ad on Kijiji asking about break questions and he had a great solution. He told me to go to a place called Kenny Upol. And Kenny Upol, I'm pretty sure it's in the States as well, it's a, it's a junkyard basically. And you go in, you take off the parts yourself and you pay for them. It's awesome. It's like a $3 entrance fee. So I went there and I was able to find the rear wiper motor, which is something ours is dead. So, you know, I could change that. Uh, spare tire carrier might put that on. I don't really know. Um, this was the most important thing. I know reverse lights, so I'm not going to show you guys how to do this stuff. I'm just showing you what I have to do to make it pass safety. So reverse light switch, a um, bunch of that stuff. So thanks, Luke, for contacting me. It really helped me out. We were able to get some parts for other cars that we have as well. And then this guy over here, that's just that's not from Kenny Upol. That's just for fun. That's going on after the safety. So if you look here, this one. And this one are different, right? This one's significantly bigger. I don't think it has to be quite that big. That's the brake for the brake switch. This piece here has to fit in here, which it fits in here, but it doesn't fit in here, right? So we're just going to drill it out a little bit just so we can get that in there. And then on top of that goes the... Do -do -do. Brake switch, right? So this is really important. So we got to do this. So that's the first mod we're going to do. I don't have a drill bit big enough, so I'm just going to have to play around with it, but sometimes you got to do what you got to do. Dad, I just how these two things fit. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Good. All right. Ooh, it is bright out. Light's bouncing off my Jeep right into my eyeballs. Okay, let's uh, show you where we're at now. I'm going to try to get this guy in. And it's pretty tight, maybe a little bit more. Now, i got, I got to be careful here because this is pretty thin. Uh, the other ones I saw in the bleeping Jeep video, his was much thicker. So he had a different one. He had it from a, um, a ZJ. This one's from a Cherokee. But the good thing about this one is I don't have to make it flat because the point of this right here is for this switch to go on like this, right? This is how it sits. It goes on just like that. I don't have to shave it down because it's already really, really thin as it is. A lot thinner than I would like it, but it's different than the ZJ like I mentioned. So now what we got to do is make sure this all goes in. And it's pretty darn close. I think if I hammer it with something then perhaps I'll break something perhaps I'll go in, who knows boom there we go that's what I need so that goes in, I'm kind of an idiot because I didn't put the switch on first so I gotta take it out again but hey put that on and then we'll move on alright let's make all right, let's make this easier on ourselves. Take a little bit of synthetic grease, put it in, there we go. Now we put the switch on, and now this should go in. Look at that, that's what we want. This is the assembly that we need for it to work. Perfect. Okay, so we just worked out all our details. We're about to install the new brake booster. Now, before we do that, I just want to show you a couple things, just so you know. This is off a 9596 Cherokee. This is the original 88 Cherokee. As you can see, single chamber versus dual chamber. Massive weight difference. This one's way heavier, so hopefully that will be much better. Now, a couple things that are different. The new master cylinder, as you can see, the brake lines are on the right. This one, they're on the other side. So the other brake lines will not work. You will have to replace them. Some people have been, uh, like the guy in Bleeping Jeep, the thing I didn't like that he did is he took the brake lines and he just kind of like pulled them in. We're just going to put new ones in because they're 10 bucks. You know, I'm all for saving old things, but $10 brake lines, brand new. Might as well make it new. Might as well make it safe. 
So we'll do that. First thing we gotta do too is get the uh, the actual chamber in. But right now we're doing some soldering, some cutting of the wires because the wires are really close by. We're just gonna sleeve them, make a little extra room, and then put this bad boy in. So we're gonna remove the lines from the proportioning valve because they are no good and they're too short. We're gonna be keeping the same old proportioning valve. Don't need to change that. Okay, now we're gonna put our master cylinder on the brake booster. Love these ratchet wrenches, so much quicker. All right, let's go put this bad boy in. And it's all finished. Brake booster's in, master cylinder's in, with the new brake lines that my dad fashioned. It's all connected on the inside, everything's good to go. All that's left to do, we gotta bleed the brakes and we gotta try it out. That's the end of it for now. We're not gonna show you how to bleed the brakes, that's a completely different video. This is the system. Next thing we wanna do is we wanna do a test drive. You're gonna have to check out the next video for that. We're gonna try the brakes out and try the truck out for the first time. And hopefully we make it to this wedding. All right, well I think it's time to relax now after all that hard work. Unfortunately, we didn't get to bleed the brakes as I mentioned. Um, we didn't get the e-brake on. There's still reverse lights to do and there's a bunch of other things to do. Uh, the project is not finished yet and I have to leave for a couple days so I want to come back. It's only going to be four days till the wedding. And here comes my dog. <laughs> We're about to go for a walk with my girlfriend. And um, I really hope I can make this thing for the wedding. I'm not 100% sure if we can. It's still, still a lot to do. Still a lot of things that can go wrong and uh, still a lot more work to do, but you know, we'll try our best, we'll see how it goes. It's been two years getting this thing ready, and it's, you know, down to the wire. And uh, with all this crazy madness going on, we finally have a name for the project, actually, believe it or not. We've named this project appropriately so Mad Max. So the truck is known as Mad Max, and I don't know who's mad right now, the truck or me, because <laughs> my name's Max. But honestly, at this point, it's been so crazy getting this thing ready. It, it's been so much work, so. Um, I really hope, you know, we can get it done in time, and if we can't, we can't, but we really tried our best. I'm really thankful that my dad's been helping me out. If it wasn't for him, I sure as hell would not be able to have even a chance to finish it, so. We'll see how it goes. Next time you see this, we will be test driving. We'll see how it goes. Wedding or no wedding, um, once it's finished, we'll go do a test drive, try out the brakes, try out the lights, try out everything, and we'll see how it goes. Make sure to check out some of our other videos, as well as our short film entitled Ottawa in which we integrated the Jeep restoration process into the movie.